Welcome to the official Ultra Game Tape. You'll see how to beat the Ninja Turtles. Great techniques for winning in Metal Gear. Hot tips to improve your scores in Skate or Die. And the path to victory in Defender of the Crown. This game player strategy tape is full of hints, tips, and playing strategies. To get the most from this tape, we suggest you first read the manual that comes with the cartridge and also have some experience playing the game. Good luck from the editors and game players at Game Players Magazines. Each Ninja Turtle has different talents. Once you understand their strengths and weaknesses, you'll know better how and when to use them. Michelangelo, for example, has a good striking range with his nunchucks, but isn't as good as his friends in other areas. Raphael is also limited, in a different way. He's excellent at destroying small enemies as well as flying ones. He's the fastest Ninja Turtle, but he's weak against larger foes. Leonardo has the second longest reach and is quick with his katana blade. He'll be the ninja to use in many areas, but for sheer turtle power, you should look elsewhere. Despite the fact that he's the slowest of the four, Donatello's raw strength and long reach make him your most prized fighter. Plus, he's really deadly with his bow staff. Avoid these soldiers by climbing down the manhole. Most of the sewer is a great place to use Raphael. Watch him perform some pest control here. You're about to meet Rocksteady. He's part gangster, part pig, and 100% trouble. Prepare for the fight by bringing in your toughest turtle, Donatello. As soon as you defeat Rocksteady, Bebop will take off with April. Follow them to the hideout. You don't need to climb down each manhole. You can go past the first one, but don't ignore the next. There's pizza down here, and you can get it again and again. Recharge your turtles this way. Rescue April by calling in Donatello against Bebop. Give him a good thrashing with the bow staff. Inside the dam, this enemy is the only thing separating you from a life-replenishing pizza. Up ahead is a risky jump. If you don't make it, you'll have to retrace your steps. You'll need two fully energized ninjas before beginning your underwater mission. The Foot Clan has planted bombs underneath the dam, and your job is to find and disarm the explosives. Swim clear of the electrical currents, and don't get pulled down into the seaweed. There's a time limit here, too, so defuse the bomb quickly, or you'll be turtle soup. It's easy to get caught in this trap. But if you pay attention to its patterns, you can swim out of the danger zone. Switch turtles if you need to, but make sure you have a lot of energy before swimming through these undersea plants. Brushing them really drains your energy. To disarm the last bomb, use the same techniques as before. Remember to watch the ocean current, the plant life, and the electrical currents. Welcome to the third stage. The party wagon is the only way to travel and the only way to blast through the roadblocks.
Blowing up roadblocks requires missiles, and here's where you get them. Your energy levels aren't refilled between stages, so pizzas are more important than ever. Here's a full pizza. You don't have time to explore every building in New York, so let's look at the really important ones. Don't waste your time in this room. Rescuing a captured turtle is not that difficult. You just need to know where to look for it. Follow us. You've performed your good deed for the day, and now it's time to make tracks to the end of level three. While you're moving, seek and destroy all enemy tanks. Your best move is to save your missiles by using bullets, but you don't want to waste ammo either. Shoot one bullet, wait a couple of seconds, then fire your second shot. Trail behind this missile and let it clear a path for you. Here's your final destination for this level. There's a lot of jumping to do in the sewers. Be careful, if you jump too high, you may hit your head and fall into the river. Lightly tap the A button on your controller, or better yet, use a controller with a rapid fire setting. This fire freak is dangerous, but you don't need to kill him. Stay where you are and wait, he'll do the job for you. Here's a full pizza that recharges you and returns each time you come back. Ninja Turtles, energize! You're about to face your greatest challenge so far, Mecha Turtle. Begin with Donatello and tag team to another ninja when his energy starts dropping. Use throwing weapons if you have it. Take this manhole next. Waiting for the last manhole will move you farther along in your mission. You'll also be in a position to rescue a captured turtle. Now, take number 15. Manhole number 16 is your last chance to gain energy before battling the boss of level 4. Mr. Invincibility will see you to the door. Big Mouser shoots lasers from his eyes. Stay between his feet and use a jump and slash technique. Aim for the globe in the center of his throat and keep at it. You're at the Shredder's base, so you must move quickly and carefully. Watch out for the guards and their spotlights. Stay on this level for pizza.
Take the lower path to rescue captured turtles. Boomerangs come in handy throughout the game. Down here, you can get the whole squad 99 boomerangs each. The Technodrome is in a different location each time you play. Explore each area carefully. That's the only way to find it. The enemies in the underground cavern are especially strong. So strong you shouldn't fight them directly. If you get out of their range, however, it's safe to attack them. The Technodrome Guardian watches over everything, including you. Wait for its electrical field to disappear, then take out its guns. Next, you'll want to bash in the hatch to keep more foot soldiers from coming out. Finally, aim for the Iclops radar, but make sure it doesn't touch you. That means instant death. Donatella's more than a turtle. He's your ticket out of here. At all costs, keep him alive and as energized as possible. Your encounter with the Technodrome Guardian took its toll. Luckily, you can beef up your energy supply with a nearby pizza. There's another pizza as you travel farther into the maze. And stay away from these steps. Take a safer route. After taking out the wall cannon, reward yourself by claiming the second pizza. inside the Shredder's base, you're closing in on the enemy. Your course is clear. Destroy the wall cannon, become Mr. Invincibility, and head for the door. Duck under these laser soldiers and make a run for it. Attack the soldiers with your boomerang. Warning, don't scroll the screen until you're sure all the soldiers are dead. Advance the screen slowly when you get to this narrow corridor. When you see a laser soldier, duck and don't move until he goes away. Don't mess with him and he won't mess with you. Use scrolls, boomerangs, and whatever else you can throw. Finally, you meet the Shredder. Scrolls are most effective against him, but Donatella's bow staff will work too. And your odds are good. There's only one of him but four of you.
am the creator of ultra games for Nintendo, like Metal Gear, where you're a commando searching for deadly weapons. Defender of the crown, with strategic castle sieges, waves in distress, and skit or die. In five rad events that pitch you against a friend or bionic Lester, so check out ultra games. Remember, I'm never farther than your TV. Early in the game, wait for these guards to fall asleep, then you can sneak past them. At first your energy is low, so avoid fighting. A couple of shots and you're dead. Go down the middle to get by the dogs. The guard can't see you when his back is turned. Get the binoculars, then move down screen from the truck. He'll miss. The first card. You can get several rations without leaving the truck and getting shot at. Just put on your transmitter, then take it off. Each time you do, there will be more rations or ammo to take. The cameras can't spot you when you're in the shadows here. If you see clouds of smoke, use your gas mask. Card number two. Be careful in a place that doesn't have much stuff, because there might be a pitfall. If you see one, move back fast. Surrender in this truck by entering and waiting until the guard captures you. Punch a hole in the wall to escape the cell and reach Gray Fox. All of your gear is behind this door. Killing the shotgunner is easy. If you can't get next to him to shoot him, use remote control missiles. Any weapon will work. Card number three. You can't get onto the roof of building number one until you get this bomb blast suit here in building number four. Card number four is in this truck. Here's the back door to building one. It's the twin shot. Use your grenade launcher. Go past their fire all the way to the right and take cover behind the wall. Fire away and get both of them. When you face Machine Gun Kid, use remote control missiles. That way you can hide behind walls. And use those remote control missiles to knock out the heat panels too. Don't let the rollers touch you, you'll die at once. Here's a trick, just switch to another screen and the roller will back off. To get to building number two, you've got to beat the tank. And that takes 11 mines. 
use a turbo fire controller if you've got it. You can drop three mines at a time. And don't touch the tank. Use the mine detector you got from the rooftop of Building 1 so you can see where the mines are. To enter Building 2, you don't need a pass, but you do need the enemy uniform you got in Building 4. Ready the grenade before you face the bull tank and use turbo fire if you can. Sneak by the lasers using the infrared goggles you got from the second floor of Building 1. You need Card 5 to get into most doors on the second floor of Building 2. Here on the roof of Building 2 is where you get Card 5. Card number 6. Probably the hardest thing to figure out in Metal Gear is the location of the rocket launcher. Jennifer won't talk to just anybody. So after you have a rank of four stars, call her and she will set up the grenade launcher in this room. Get out of the way. This isn't Dr. Petrovich here in Building 2. Position yourself so these Arnolds can't come at you. Then destroy them with the rocket launcher. It's the only thing that works. They'll leave you card number seven. The compass is really hard to find. You have to have a rank of four stars. Then call Jennifer and she'll set it up for you. The fastest, easiest way to get to building four is through the maze. Start by going all the way across the screen twice. Then go off the screen at the top on the far side. Then take a left. You've got to rescue Dr. Petrovich's daughter Ellen before he'll tell you anything about Metal Gear. Ellen is hidden in a secret room in Building 4. Watch out for the pitfall. Punch a hole in the right wall. You can get to Building 5 through the pitfall zone, but don't even try. The maze is much easier. Go straight across the upper part of the screen twice. Then go up, then left. There's a flashlight in this room, and if you punch the wall on the right with your iron glove, you'll see the fire trooper. You've got to use your iron glove and gas mask a lot here in Building 5. You'll beat the fire trooper if you stay close to the wall. The best weapon here is your machine gun. The oxygen tank is here in building three. You'll need it to swim through the deep water in building two. After you swim the water in Building 2, you take on Coward Duck. Run up to him and just use your handgun. Or you could hit a prisoner. Coward Duck has card 8, but watch for the pitfall in this room.
It's the supercomputer. You should have already talked to Dr. Petrovich, or nothing you try will defeat it. Plant 16 plastic explosives on the computer, then get out of there. If you survive long enough, you'll face a final foe. Use your rocket launchers against him, then take the door on the left. If you like this game tape, you'll love Game Player's Pro Tip Hotline. Now you can hear the tips you want to know just by pushing a button on your telephone. To hear this tip again, press 1. For another game tip, press 2. For our classic tips, press 3. Each week, our game player's experts choose the best hints and tips for three hot games for the Nintendo Entertainment System. Just dial and select which secrets you want to hear. Every week, we'll change the games and the hints. Try it today. If you sign up for competition at Rodney Recluse's skateboard shop, you can decide which event you want to enter. If you choose Compete All, you'll be entered in everything. Jam, Joust, Freestyle Competition, High Jump, and Downhill Racing. Let's take a tour of the game and learn a few tricks along the way. Here in the U-Zone competition, each contestant gets five tries from each side. Show off your skills with a variety of different tricks here so you can get the 9,000 point bonus. Notice the small channel at the top left side. Jump it with an aerial and you'll earn 2300 points. Also when you do a hand plant, try to hold it as long as you can. You'll get extra points. If you're playing with a friend, you can try a trick that will get you up really high. The first player turns on rapid fire or keeps pressing the B button very fast. At the same time, move the joystick back and forth fast. The second player does the same thing. Then when you're as high as you can get, press the A button to score. To gain time on the downhill, Try skating right across the grass. Then be sure to duck when you go through the pipe. Jump on the building. And jump the rocks at the end. When you try for extra points on the downhill by doing tricks, be sure you land right or you'll fall.
To get extra points, try some turns when you're jumping. You can even skate backwards. Watch. Here's another example, only this time we're in goofy foot mode, and we're going for a complete rotation during the jump. If you practice enough, you might learn to jump over the water. It's really hard to do, but you get lots of points for it. You can cut through the puddle in the jam. Collect cans for points. Jump the speed bump. There's a secret path. The ramps speed you up. And jumping on the police car gives you extra points. To capture your opponent here, try to hang on to the edge, then do a rail slide and bop him in the head. You can also use the hanging on the edge trick to fake out your opponent when he has the stick. Here's Rodney again. Move your cursor around the screen. Put it on his mouth and he'll give you some hints. Put it on the sign-in pad in the lower left to see all the scores. Sometimes you have to figure out what Rodney's trying to say. He's no professor of English. For example, when he says combo moves score big, he means that you can get a big bonus in the freestyle event when you show off a combination of tricks. It's Freedom Stick! It's the number one bet! It's got no wise, it's a one to get! Arcade action is where you'll be! Yeah, Freedom Stick will set you free! No wires! It works with Sega, Nintendo 2, with Atari, Commodore, it's real cool! Higher scores is what you'll see, cause Freedom Stick will set you free! No wires! Freedom Stick! If you enjoyed this great game tape, you'll really enjoy Game Players Magazine! Every exciting issue is packed full of hints, tips, and playing strategies, just like the ones on this game tape. You can order a dream subscription to both Game Player's Guide to Nintendo Games and Game Player's Magazine, a total of 18 awesome issues today for only $39.95. Don't miss another issue. If you want to play to win, call now. Our operators are ready. Remember, this number is for subscription orders only. The dream subscription for Nintendo Game Players. At the beginning of Defender of the Crown, you'll be selecting the character you wish to be. Jeffrey Longsword is a great swordsman, but falls short in other areas. Don't choose him as a character, but keep him in mind when picking a jousting opponent. You may be tempted to choose Wolfric the Wild because of his excellent jousting skills. Remember, however, that he's not much of a leader or swordsman. Pass over Wolfric the Wild for a better all-round character. Cedric of Rotherwood, on the other hand, is gifted in the areas Wolfric is not. He has considerable talents, but not in the right combination. 
The man who can best lead you to the crown is Wilfred of Ivanhoe, who isn't strong in any one skill, but can probably handle any situation you encounter. Before beginning your quest for power, play a few practice rounds to develop your skills. When doing this, use a character strong in the area you're working on. For example, be Wolfric the Wild to improve your jousting. Choose Geoffrey Longsword to practice sword fighting. Read the map thoroughly to find out who owns each territory. Pay special attention to their strengths and weaknesses. You can increase your fame throughout the kingdom by winning the tournament. Passing your turn will earn you extra money, but Normans may move against you. Make sure you plan ahead. It costs five gold pieces to call a tournament. If you can't afford this, the computer will let you know. It's important to make the best possible decisions. Before beginning a tournament, be sure you can afford to part with a piece of land if you lose. Don't leave yourself open to attack, and don't start challenging your friends for land. They may not be your friends much longer. To be a champion jouster, aim your lance at the bottom part of your opponent's shield. Don't worry about defending yourself, since there are no real defense techniques for this. When jousting, you want to hit your opponent, but not his horse. That mistake will cause you to be disgraced and barred from future tournaments. At the beginning, it's good to go ahead and claim as much land as possible. It raises your income and protects your castle from attack. When your mace is at this point, press the A button for maximum impact. If you're able to rescue the beautiful maiden Rosalind, you'll unite the two kingdoms. You need to have at least one section of territory besides the land that holds your castle. You can wager your extra property at the tournament. With luck and skill, you'll win your enemy's land. You can gain more territory around your castle, or you can claim lands that separate you from choice properties. When buying an army, spend your money on catapults and soldiers. Castles and knights aren't much help and will probably just slow you down. Get at least three catapults. There are two ways to attack a castle. A siege means you're trying to take it over completely. A raid means sending a soldier into the castle to steal its gold. Check the load ammunition screen before starting a siege. You may discover that no one's guarding the enemy fort. Fire off your ammunition and the castle will be yours. Sometimes, for no apparent reason, the computer will plot against you. The results can be really awful. Select the read map option and point the arrow at your castle. This will let you see your status screen and keep you informed about the money you've collected and what size army you've assembled. Before raiding a castle, stop by Sherwood Forest and ask Robin Hood to help you. He'll only agree to do it three times, but his help is valuable. Here's a quick guide to better sword fighting. Get close to your enemy, stab him once, and take a step back. Keep doing this and he'll get the point. Remember, you can find out who the worst swordsman is by reading the map. Keep a watch on the Saxons. They are your allies, but you need to make sure they don't control too much territory. If they do, you'll live to regret it. If your castle is attacked, defend it with a crossbow. Have a lot of soldiers ready so your life meter will show full strength. Move from left to right. With Robin's help, you're ready to attack a castle. 
Begin your siege by catapulting boulders into the castle wall. Next, shoot some diseases into the castle. Finally, use Greek fire to finish the job. The best course of action here is to have as many catapults as possible and use the bombard command. Whenever you conquer a castle, hire more soldiers to protect it. Once more the enemy is plotted against you. This time it will cost you half your gold. To get a head start on your empire, go after the lord who has the most territory. When you seize his castle, you'll gain control of all his properties. You need a healthy supply of soldiers in your castle and your army before you fight for your last castle. Catapults are important too. When you own most of the territories, challenge the other lords to tournaments. Beating them will give you even more land. The enemy has been crushed. The crown is yours. So ends the quest for the crown. Follow these game tips and the kingdom will be yours.